Welcome back everyone, today we are going to make some acetyl salicylic acid, also known as aspirin. For this 69 grams of salicylic acid, 55 milliliters of acetic anhydride, 58 milliliters of glacial acetic acid as a solvent, distilled water and ethanol are needed. Besides that we also used 5 milliliters of acetic anhydride containing a little less than 15% of sulfuric acid as a catalyst. I don't know the reason for this, but the color of this changed red over time. It is probably still good enough to be used as a catalyst. Like in every single one of my preparations, the ethanol was empty, the distilled water was nearly empty and the glacial acetic acid was frozen in the bottle. Glacial acetic acid melts at about 16 degrees celsius. We put it onto a heater to melt it. The distilled water was refilled from a big canister and I tried to first siphon the ethanol but after this didn't work because the canister is already nearly empty, I used the funnel and spilled a bunch of it. Before proceeding, we put on some gloves and safety goggles. We then started off by weighing out approximately 69 grams of salicylic acid. We ended up with 69.4 grams. Salicylic acid is a white, fluffy looking powder. Breathing in dust of it is definitely unpleasant and should be avoided. Using a ground glass joint, the salicylic acid was quickly transferred to a 1 liter round bottom flask. Using this device, which is specifically produced only for poking at salicylic acid, we were able to free the salicylic acid from the funnel. With the use of a measuring cylinder, we measured out 55 milliliters of glacial acetic acid and 5 milliliters of glacial acetic acid containing 15% sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid is required as a catalyst. Other acids might also be used, but I am unsure about that. After a steel fish has already been added, the acetic anhydride sulfuric acid mixture was transferred to the flask. If you have pure sulfuric acid, you could just add a few drops of this. Here's an excellent example of why you should melt the reagent you want to use completely before pouring it. The block of glacial acetic acid ice started to move and a bunch of it was spilled. This happened not one, but two consecutive times. I learned from my mistakes and it won't happen again, but this is an example of why gloves and safety goggles must always be worn in any lab. After cleaning up everything, the glacial acetic acid was added to the rest of the solution. It doesn't participate in the reaction, but it's just used as a solvent. In my experience, it increases the yield significantly. After everything has been added, a reflux was set up. The condenser was flushed with water and we were then ready to begin. Both heating and stirring were turned on. On the top of the flask you can see that some glacial acetic acid actually started to freeze. It will soon melt again and go down into the mixture. On the top we added one of these hose adapters to keep at least some of the moisture out. It took about 10 minutes until everything started boiling and by this moment we were left with a clear and just little red solution. The reaction taking place can be seen above. Salicylic acid reacts with acetic anhydride under acidic conditions to form acetic acid and acetyl salicylic acid. If water was present, acetyl salicylic acid would hydrolyze back to salicylic acid under acidic conditions. For this reason, this reaction can't be performed with glacial acetic acid, but acetic anhydride or acetyl chloride must be used. After 180 minutes of continuous refluxing, the heating mantle was turned off. The apparatus was then disassembled, a magnetic stirrer was set up and the reflux column was taken off. The magnetic stirrer was turned on and afterwards 400 milliliters of ice cold distilled water were added. Acetyl salicylic acid has a poor solubility in water but a high solubility in acetic acid. By adding water we were able to crash out a lot of the aspirin. To decrease the solubility even further, an ice bath was set up. Magnetic stirrers fortunately go through a lot of materials. The magnetic stirrer helped us speed up the cooling process. Stirring was continued until the temperature of 7 degrees Celsius was reached. We were left with this pudding-like looking mass. Although it looks delicious, you should not eat it. Aspirin is toxic in large doses and it would also smell horrible because of a lot of acetic acid present. A vacuum filtration was carried out to get rid of the majority of the water. If you take a look at this filtration and cringe, yes, I should definitely get a bigger filtration funnel and a bigger flask for this kind of stuff. Once the filtration was finished, we were left with this crude aspirin, which does not look pure. Everything was put back into the one liter round bottom flask, which was still dirty. 
As a solvent, 150ml of 96% ethanol were added. The solution was heated until everything dissolved and then we added about 150ml of distilled water. Again, the distilled water acts to decrease the solubility of the acetyl salicylic acid. I first let the beaker stand like this in hopes for some stuff that crashed out, but it didn't. Then I put it into an ice bath and afterwards I decided to put it into the freezer overnight. The next day after the recrystallization it looked like this, still extremely dirty. Before continuing we got rid of the majority of the water by gravity filtration and afterwards washed it a single time with distilled water. Here you can have a closer look at the crude product. It honestly looks like shit and this is unacceptable. Just take a look at all of those impure spots in there. Before I'll do a second recrystallization, we are going to dry it in a vacuum chamber over anhydrous calcium chloride. The air was sucked out and because of the reduced pressure, the water started to boil soon afterwards. The second recrystallization will be done in a solvent that doesn't contain water and therefore complete dryness is necessary. After it was mostly dried, it looked like this. Air was let back into the vacuum chamber and we were ready for a recrystallization. Because my hot plate broke and I don't have any other chance to do this, we had to improvise and I built this extremely dangerous DIY hot plate. Definitely can't recommend anyone to repeat this because it's fire hazard and it's not really safe. We added a small amount of 96% ethanol, turned on the power supply and waited for it to dissolve. It was probably way too much ethanol but we should still get some cleaner product. The hot plate did its job very well, well and at some point all of the acetyl salicylic acid dissolved. Once it had dissolved completely, we were left with this sort of orange but clear solution. The fact that we were left with a clean solution stated that we were finished here. The hot plate was switched off and the beaker was placed in the freezer. The next day a gravity filtration was performed. For some strange reason most of the acetyl salicylic acid crashed out after the gravity filtration and therefore I decided to do a second one. This was the stuff that crashed out after the first filtration. We will just filter this again and are afterwards going to label it as dirty acetyl salicylic acid. After the filtration we were left with these two things. On the right side you can see the clean acetyl salicylic acid, on the left side you can see the dirty stuff. It was powderized and left overnight in these paper trays to dry completely. Once it was dry, it was packed into pre-weight bags for storage. In the end we were left with 34.8 grams of acetyl salicylic acid. This corresponds to yields around 40%. I decided not to recover any product from the solvent because it wasn't worth my time. I still have about 300 grams of pure acetyl salicylic acid left. I was able to reach 80% yields on a smaller scale with an excess of acetic anhydride a few years ago. As a solvent, 30% ethanol was used. I performed a test for salicylic acid on both of these samples using the method listed above here. And it proved that none of these samples contained any salicylic acid or only a really small amount of it. If you liked today's video, make sure to draw me one of these. And consider subscribing if you don't want to miss out on other awesome chemistry content in the future. Also, if you like it, feel free to support me on Patreon. I wish all of you a nice day. Until next time. Bye.